You're listening to Front Oldies, 100.9 FM and AM 1450. Welcome to the fastest hour in radio. All about cars. Brought to you by ABC Motors Prescott with your host, David, don't call me Dave Spence, and Big Mike Hill. All right, so Mike, we're back here so early in the morning. I'm getting tired of this early morning stuff. You realize I don't like getting up at this early every single week? Well, you know, if we can get 100,000 listeners to each send in $1, we can buy our way to a easier listening s- slot. That would be a good idea. Get a little extra snooze time in the morning. You know, I like to be up late at night. But I guess this morning stuff, you told me it was because all of us car guys get ready for car shows and that sort of stuff, right? Well... That's where I'm at when I'm in the when I'm going to a car show on Saturday morning. That's where I'm doing. I'm in the garage or I'm on my way there about this time. Yeah, I can understand that. You got to go out there and polish up the little baby and get it ready to go, don't you? Absolutely. Now I hear a vicious rumor that we got somebody special coming up in the second segment of the show today. That is probably more substantial than a rumor. More substantial than a rumor. When somebody drives, I think it's 12, 1300 miles to come be on our radio show at this time of day. That's substantial. I'd say that's substantial or goofy. I'm not sure <laughs> which, know, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we're, we're sort of small potatoes, aren't we yet? Yeah, uh, you know, well, we are what we are. But, so, we've got somebody in the second segment that is, what'd you say, he's a, the, the Mustang aficionado, period? He is pretty much the Mustang guru. I mean, when, when you get an opportunity, I met him last year, when you get an opportunity to actually talk to him, and I'm going to try pretty much to stay out of it because he's got so much information, and I've talked to him for hours, really? and you haven't. No, I have So I really want to let you guys, I want you to find out what this guy is all about. And I don't want to spoil it. I don't want to spoil it. He's got interesting stories. He's a technical guy. He's old school, new school, and he's legit. He's not what you see on TV. He's not the cap tooth million dollar cars pre-sold before they even build them. And it, this guy's real deal. Well, so the only thing I have for a question now about him is, how did you meet him? I met him at a car show. Which car show? It was last year. It was Thumb Butte Gas Station had a car show uh, out on Gurley Street there right next to the Thumb Butte Car Wash. Yeah. They had a uh, San Martin put it on, and it was late in the summer, and they were out here. They This car was really nice. I took a liking to it, uh, 69 Mustang. We started talking about it, and uh, he actually won an award at the show for best use of technology. Hmm. And I really, like I said, I don't really want to give away nah, too much. Don't give it away. But it's one of those things that when you look at it from the outside, you go, hey, that's cool. And then you start talking to him, and you go, oh, that's really cool. And it's not like he took, you know, you see these guys take the old school Camaros and pickup trucks and throw the LS1 motors in them and the new Corvette motors in them, the Z6 motor. It's not that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. This is taking what what it was born with. And making that better. And then improving it and adding things that didn't belong, for lack of a better term, and making them actually look like they belong and function. So does he like make his living doing this? Yes. Okay. So we've kind of wet everybody's appetite there, so we're going to drop that for the moment because I don't want you to tell me everything. I, and I really, you, you can see me kind of itching here to tell you. Uh, I it's, know. <laughs> it's really pretty cool stuff. All right. So that's really cool. Now, you said something to me before the show today that you wanted to say something about batteries because it's getting warm. I did. I did. I uh, Indeed. There's... I don't know about you, but as I've been driving around town, I've been seeing a lot of cars that I haven't been that I haven't seen before. There's a '69 Camaro running around. There's a '72 El Camino running around. There's a couple Chevelles. A lot, a lot of '40s, 
So you mean the people have taken them out because there's no salt on they, the road anymore, right? They've blown the dust <laughs> off them. And they've blown them. I'm sorry. I had to throw that yeah. in. You know, we got no salt, no. you know. We do, we do get cinders, but we didn't get any darn snow this year. I mean, None. good grief. Well, not everybody is like you, David. Your cars, while they look like they're trailer queen show cars, you actually drive your cars. I know I do. That's now, why, I, why I said it. No, I'm not going to give anybody the fake impression that you go and play in the mud and get everybody <laughs> to pile into the car. You treat no. the car with the respect it deserves, but you drive them. You actually, yeah. How many miles would you say you put on your gram every year? Well, let's see, I've had the Graham 20 years. It took me about eight years spare time messing with it. So I drove it 12. You divide 12 into, yeah, the easiest way to say, 5,000 at least. So now That's here, easy. Now here's the thing. Mm -hmm. You put 5,000 miles on the car, and you've got five cars that you drive on a regular basis. Yes, I drive a lot. So that's... That that's different than somebody that puts five thousand miles on their car and they only have one car. Yes. Yeah. Because you, know, you probably put about the same on your terraplane, about the same on your solstice, a little bit less on the other solstice, and I know you you wear out that flower truck. Well, of course, yeah, I do wear out the flower truck very much so. But you you know, Mike, it is my wife's favorite outdoor activity. Second favorite. Mm, no, that's an indoor activity. <laughs> Wait for it. <laughs> what are you so quiet about? Oh, man, I'm just listening. Just listening. I'm that... waiting for this great battery tip. Well, well, we are waiting for the battery tip. We haven't gotten there. We got into the driving <laughs> because we were talking about the well, cars but, we're seeing. Right. And so I was talking to Richard over at Budget Batteries. Right yeah. there, and I don't know if you know where Budget Batteries is. He's two blocks south of uh, the square on Montezuma, right next door to ABC Motors Prescott. Oh, I was going to ask, is he that guy next door to ABC Motors Prescott? He is, and he's mm. kind of tucked back between Think for Inc. and ABC Motors Prescott, so he's a little hard to see, but if you pull into ABC Motors Prescott and say, hey, where's the battery guy's shop? We'll yeah. point you right over there next door. But I was talking to Richard, and I said, Richard, if you could tell people one thing to help their battery life, during the summer heat, what would it be? And I was a little... A low cholesterol diet. No, no, <laughs> I was... I was, But I was a little surprised by what he said, actually. Because um, what he said, he simply, he didn't even bat an eye. And he said, Mike, he said, got to make sure they've got enough fluid in them. Now, for a lot of people, battery maintenance is not high on the list. For example, Scott, how often do you change your oil? Uh, as soon as it shows very low on the dipstick, I actually just add it. Okay. <laughs> then my, my, my truck doesn't hold oil long enough to change it. Understood. Okay. But how about your wife? So he's continuously changing is what he right. told you. Right. Yeah. How about your wife's vehicle? Uh, I don't know the mileage, but about every three months. Okay. So regular basis. Yeah. And you check your tire pressure on a regular basis? Not as regular because what the, on her she's got a it, it's, it's monitored yeah and it'll tell okay. you what the once it's that then I keep them all around thirty five okay PSI. in the last five years how many times have you checked your battery's fluid levels in any of your vehicles um you know what in my truck I check them during the summertime pretty much and that's it when, okay. once the temperature starts rising uh, maybe once a month. Awesome. But uh, that's because I can open it. My wife's has got the sealed battery. There's nothing to pop open on right, that to check right. it out. So I haven't. Right. I will bet he checks his battery more than most people ever it, do. Uh, absolutely. I know a lot of people would say, how do you check a battery? <laughs> yeah. Well, the good news is Richard Over Budget Batteries also offers that as a free service if it's an accessible battery. When I say accessible battery, I mean not the one that's under the fender well that you can't get to. You know, it's not fair to go ask the guy to work on your car for two hours to expose the battery so that he can do a free service. So you mean all cars about pre-1934 are not going to get a free battery check? <laughs> Actually, those, you just unbolt the seat. It's too bad. I know. That's what I was going to no, say. It's yeah. usually <laughs> under the seat or the floor, man. Yeah, but those are easy. It's just two bolts. But like the... Um, Say that after you've seen it in a Kissel. Well, right, right. <laughs> but like a late model or a, a mid a mid year model Sebring, yeah, it's inside the fender well. That's just stupid. It takes it? it literally takes forty five minutes to get to it. 
What about if you're going to jumpstart that car? I'm sorry to change the subject, but I mean, does it have it has remote terminal? It does. They oh, have, okay. they have remote have terminals up up above, and and that and that's all well and good. It's just and you know Corvettes they have them in the back hatch behind the seat, right? Yeah, and and that stuff's been done for a long, long time. But why did they put it there in a the Corvette? As long as we're digressing just slightly, seriously, why would you put it there in a the Corvette? For for my, I don't know the exact design purpose. For myself, I would say it's probably for weight distribution and space concern because of the sloped front end. Yeah. Right. Well, I would say, I would say the same thing. I figure you probably had that set up in that car. <laughs> so I sort of understand that. I'm not understanding the fender well business here, guy. Occupying space that otherwise is unused. They're, it's they're, still sucky. No, well, there there is one. <laughs> just there, it. There, there is one advantage to that design. What? Which is you do get the fender, the inner fender well shielding, the engine compartment heat from the okay. Battery. I could uh, I could yeah. see you could see that, but let's look at it this way. It's one of my pet peeves always about doing stuff on cars, just in general, is that I think engineers should be forced to take apart that which they design. I agree. Now, as I was saying, Richard over at Budget Batteries will at no charge check your fluid levels in your battery. He'll also run a uh, short diagnostic on them. And he's really got some pretty good prices uh, when you start comparing him to the other places. And if you want to talk to a guy who knows about batteries, he's not the Walmart tech. He's not the the O'Reilly type, you know, quick shop guy that does a million things. He just does batteries. You want to watch battery, car battery, bike battery, tractor battery. He's got it. He's even got some camcorder and cell phone batteries. Hmm. So... It's a great place if you're having any question. If you just dusted the mothballs off your car, way to go. So we're going to have our guest in the next segment right after these messages. All right. You're listening to All About Cars, 100.9 FM and AM 1450, brought to you by ABC Motors Prescott. I looked down at my lovely bride, her face was blue, I thought she died. We left streaks through town about 40 feet wide, but me and that Mercury stayed.